To enjoy this and other great episodes on Patreon, check out the link in the description and subscribe via the Black Kluge tier for full access to over 100 exclusive episodes. For those of you who would like some QF swag on TeePublic t-shirts, magnets, mugs, what have you, also click on the link in the description. Would you sure. pretend that I am Bahati? I'm sitting here, I, I'm going to be honest with you, it's hot in the garage, I'm wearing a bra top, I okay. have my, and I only have panties on, I'm being honest. Can you go a little slower? Just talk about it. <laughs> you have underwear on under that robe? I do, that's all I have on though. Oh my god. <laughs> um, so Easy. wait, you're in your garage, you're in your garage, Bahati is, uh, I'm Bahati, you leave it alone. You know what? You're doing just fine. I, I should only look like you. All right. So I'm Bahati. We're in the garage. I'm bathed. I'm moisturized. I've completely shaven for you. And I'm sitting here listening to my husband. Gross. Gross. <laughs> I've had dinner at Mar-a-Lago with Donald many times. Not at the same table. But he would come over. He would give me a tour of Mar-a-Lago. I, I, I've been there. I told you. It's like heaven. Oh, it's hot. It's burn my mouth. <laughs> uh, dry oatmeal. Uh, I need one. What? Oh. On it. Where you could just put them in your ear and, like, there'd be Bluetooth or something. Because I need to, I can't even afford to buy socks anymore, you know? No. Well, all right. Well, hey, okay. I'm glad to hear you're doing okay, and, uh... I have my routine. And the days go so fast because I just sit in my room and entertain myself. Like when I was a little boy. Time means nothing. Yeah. No such thing as time. <laughs> if I didn't have to shower and eat, I'd just sit in that room. I'm yeah, telling you. I, it's that, it's that narcissism where you think the whole world revolves around you and you're entitled to do whatever you want. But, you know, when you're a football player and you're used to being catered to and you're the most famous football player in the world... You can get caught up in that. And then when your wife says, hey, you know, you need to take the garbage out and drive the kids to school, and you get resentful and you go, don't you know who I am? You know? I can't get that image of your dad playing piano with you on your, with, with you on his lap. It's just, uh, I don't usually feel stuff, so this never happens to me. <laughs> um. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to QF, a podcast about Howard Stern. I'm your host, Phil Moore, a.k.a. Jim Fix, back again in the saddle with Sam. How are you, my dear? Oh, I can't wait for this. It's going to be a good episode, guys. It's one where Ralph gets uh, all kinds of shit thrown at him, and it's the, also the kind of thing that you can't imagine happens unless you're the boss's girlfriend and you're under his protection. It's one of those episodes where, at the time, even if you heard it later on, you kind of stashed it away in the back of your brain because it did stick out. Like, wait a minute, what mm -hmm. is going on? Yeah, there's, it's, there's, it's just, it, it, it can't be anything else. But at, you're right. At the time, I, I wonder at that time when they, even they used the term, I think it was Dominic called in and said, the boss's girlfriend. It's like he's the boss's girlfriend. And yet there's no better term to explain it. They made song parodies about it. Opie and Anthony questioned it. I remember thinking, of course, this is all in good fun. Mm -hmm. But as time wore on and you collect these sort of clips, you just start to think, wait, what the fuck is going on? Especially after his divorce. So my question to you was, I, I think I asked James about the same thing. When did you start to think Howard was a little flu fruity and uh, or when you when you started to think for real that he is gay or at least bi? And James said it was the Goo Goo Dolls gay dance party. That was his first real sort of strong push. What about for you? OK, well, I noticed things, but to be honest, my strong push my strong push, I don't think, started happening until I think I heard it was the Artie Ralph and you can't live without your stylist and <laughs> the underwear, trying on underwear. I think that kind of was like the biggest red flag for me where I was, I was just not, it wasn't just funny anymore. 
I thought this is going along with also more gay things happening on the show. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what the hell is going on? And then already got off and then the cock stuff started like October. Okay. Well that's, that's, so that's really more, more recently. Like that's definitely in the last, in like five years ago, let's say. Yeah. If, if I'm going to be honest, I mean, it's always in the back of my head, but more convincing mm -hmm. is later on because okay. you, of course you want to give the benefit of the doubt to this person because I guess how could you be so stupid not to see it? It's almost me not mad at myself for not, mm -hmm. not fully fleshing that out because you don't want to. <laughs> I don't know if you don't want to, or you just figure, no, it's just probably, it probably is just this guy he's doing like for the longest time I wrote it off as he thinks it's funny. We know it's not funny, but he's just stuck in a rut. I actually think it's my hatred for Beth that blinded me. Mm -hmm. Like, I think I found her to be such a reprehensible, annoying human being into right. the show that ruined it, that okay. it kind of blinded me to the fact that all this gay shit was going on behind the scenes and not really questioning it as much because I was so annoyed with Beth's furry friends, Bianca's furry friends, the dog, her her appearances, the, the nonstop red carpets. That took my attention away from what was actually really going on. Okay, so you were distracted by all the, the other shit going on. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Well, we're going to go with it, guys, and we hope you enjoy it. This is definitely going to be a two-parter because it's a, it's just too much audio and video to to sift through. This is the funniest thing that I heard yesterday. I didn't bring it up to you because we ran out of time, but funnier than my air checks. Funnier than my early tapes at my radio station mm -hmm. when I first started out in radio. Now, this must be funny because those are pretty funny. Yeah. Billy says to me, you know, Billy kept saying the reason Ralph is so annoying and he tries to be funny at these bar mitzvahs and weddings and stuff whenever we all get together uh -huh. and he throws pieces of paper at the help and everything. He uh -huh. says he wants to be a performer. And I said, no, nah, I don't think that's it, you know, but Billy doesn't tell me. Ralph evidently has been calling Billy over and over again to write him a stand-up act. No. No. Oh. Okay. So right off the bat, Howard says that Ralph told him. Did I listen to? Did I hear that correctly? Ralph told him that Billy. I, I just. Sorry. I just. I, I listened to that maybe because I'm exhausted. I. I didn't make full sense of it. About did which he, part? Did he say Ralph called him? To say that Billy Ralph says. Ralph called him. Ralph called Billy to help write him a stand-up act. That's right. But and Billy but told so, so, Howard that he wants to be basically right. a performer. So right. all of this stuff. It's coming from Bill. It's it's coming from Billy though. It's not coming from Ralph because later on Ralph's going to claim like I don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, well, why would Billy lie about that? I can totally see that happening. And Billy sure. doesn't seem like a liar, no offense. And, and I mean, not that anybody would take offense, but he just doesn't. Mm -hmm. And this reminds me, too, you see how he said he throws paper at the help? Yes. Which, by the way, is the most elitist piece of shit statement I've ever heard. Sure. Um, it reminds me of Scott Disick, like in Keeping Up with the Kardashians. They're at dinner in Las Vegas, and Scott Disick is a total drunk nightmare asshole. He takes a dollar bill and crumples it up. They don't want to serve him any more drinks. Okay. Not the waiters, but the Kardashians. So they tell the waiters not to serve him anymore. He's overserved. So he stands up at the table. The guy's got a bunch of drinks. He's carrying them over to the table. He stands up and he takes a hundred dollar bill and he shoves it in the guy's mouth. Fuck's sake. But I'm saying like this is Ralph really thinks. I don't think it's just because he wants to be a performer. I think Ralph is generally this big of an asshole narcissist and thinks that he could get away with it. Well, the only reason, like I said, the only reason you do that is if you knew you were under the protection of someone. And the only kind of like, but Allison, Allison, um, Burns, you know, Howard's wife at the time, mm -hmm. she's not an asshole like that. So Ralph is simply a fucking entitled little piece of shit bitch, but he wouldn't act like that if he thought he was going to get in shit from Howard. So he has well, his protection all the time is what he knows. 
I mean, it does say something when you see the behavior of how everybody else acts around Howard, and that means yes. his wife, his children, his employees, versus Ralph acts like an entitled little mistress. Mm-hmm. Like, but but the, the idea of like someone who's got Polaroids or video or some evidence, the way let's say a stripper from Scores who gets a Mercedes does. Yeah. Right. Yes. So this would have been like a nail. Like, had I heard this at the time, I would have seen this video and went, "There's something not right here." There's absolutely no way I would have missed this. But of course, when you're listening in your car, passively driving to work and you're not yeah. rewinding a tape and we're not right. doing this, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? So you would, yeah. you would just kind of hear it and not think about it so much. Right. You might say, well, he's an asshole. Everybody hates him. Howard seems to, and Howard, if Howard who, who craves like disharmony in his, in his, amongst his staff in order to make the things entertaining, that's like perfect for him. Well, but here, here's the other thing. Like you said, he's painted like an asshole, which we all thought, which is fine. But now when you go back and hear it with new ears, it's a different story. It's not that he's just an asshole. There, right. This sounds different now. Yes. Right. And, and so anyway, so what this is, you're just going to hear horrible, like people just going after uh, Ralph and deservedly so. But again, mm -hmm. he, he just, he's like a duck. He just uh, what, the shakes the water off. Oh yeah. This is interesting. <laughs> How funny is that? I was right out of left field too. Yeah. What are you talking about? Now he what? has that quiz. You're, 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 you're kidding. Look no. Face. According to uh, Billy, you've asked me for, for, uh, for uh, Billy yeah. to write you a stand up act. No. It's completely not true. You, you don't. You don't call Billy. No, I have never called. You've never Billy. spoken to V West. I've spoken to V. And but... you never asked if Billy could write you funny jokes. <laughs> no. Really? I swear to God. Oh, we'll wait till Billy gets in here. Yeah. yeah. We'll confront you then. Because Billy claims you're trying to put together a stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not just Billy. Why would his wife make that up? Who's not on the show? Right. Who has barely anything to do with it? So you're telling me some random person wife is going to make this up about Ralph for no reason? What does she have against Ralph? Nothing. Well, that that's where there's that. And then if anybody wants to compare really the 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 sort of the ebb and flow of this video versus another episode we've done, go back into the um the fight with Artie about stealing money at the poker game and then stealing a tip for a waitress. Um yeah in Vegas when they were all there. And it's the same sort of angle that uh, Ralph takes both times. Like, what did you say? Oh, excuse me. What, what was that? How, what it, happened? Well, it's the same shyster behavior, but he's also relying on the fact that Howard will, yes, kind of interrogate him, but also get him out of it at the same time because it never gets pushed yep. too much. And it always gets colored by different aspects to make everybody purposefully confused when it's yep. not confusing whatsoever. That's and right. I also will say um, that V, Billy's wife, I'm assuming when Ralph called and asked for this favor, at the time, Billy's severely underpaid and a huge talent on oh, the yeah. show. So imagine how annoying that is to hear the boss's girlfriend calling for some stand-up writing. What do you think Ralph's going to pay him? No. Well, this, well, the situation is it's a it's a social situation where Ralph asks for this, and he's most likely either either's drunk or sober or drinking. It, it, sorry, well, obviously he's either so, sober or drunk. Most likely in the process of having had popped a few drinks, maybe yeah. some drugs as well. And then Ralph being an outspoken asshole at the worst possible times, insulting people's wives and spouses when the other person's in the room, getting into, getting knocked out at scores and being found in the bathroom, like having been laid out, uh, most likely because of opening his mouth, thinking nothing's going to happen to yeah. me. That, you know, he, he was accused of dealing ecstasy. Yes. And then all this, like, you know, his fucked up, he doesn't, he, he can't have a credit card or he fuck, he, um, he, um, he, his credit score is, is, is fucked up. I can't remember that's I, that's one we had to cover as well. I never thought about this, but you know what? The jingle ball, that whole saga where what's her face overdosed on ecstasy. Emily. Yeah. Was Ralph at that? Um, I don't know. There's, well, there's a couple jingle balls and I don't remember which one that that particular one was. They were already finished. So maybe 99. There is no way that 
the club picked him out for no reason. There had to be something substantial going on that they saw that even though he's Howard Stern's bitch, that mm-hmm. they kicked that guy out and thought he was dealing. Most likely. Yeah. And I mean, he, he was busted for that. I believe, um, I think it was a bit for dealing pot or something. I know it sounds, it sounds like, you know, archaic now that pot is legal in, I don't know, ever how many States. A lot. Um, yeah. So, but at, at that time dealing is dealing and, and it's, it's more of a worry of cops are going to fucking bust us. They're going to shut this down. If that's part of the, you know, if that, ha- if that gets known in the Juliana era. Yeah. Giuliani. Giuliani. Yeah. Sorry. Giuliana. <laughs> <laughs> Who's she? <laughs> Giuliani era. Yeah. So either way, um, yeah, it's, it's the horrible behavior. And so, and V and Billy, and at th- this point, again, keep in mind, guys, this year, this is the year that Billy leaves. So this is just more fuel on the fire. I wouldn't make that up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't percentage. think that Billy I, 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 would I, make that up. I, Bill, Billy needs to be medicated, or maybe he is. Maybe I that's don't know. Problem. I don't know. Maybe that's why he looks like a spaz on the E network. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do impressions. I don't know. Billy. Uh, very good. All right, I'll find out when he comes yeah. in. Thank you. Rara retard. Oh, I hope that's true. Yeah, Just Ralph. I get- you see the look Howard gave him? It was like an adoring fucking, like, owner. Yeah. Like, like I, if I could have, if I could have just amazed, maybe I'll make a gif of it at some other point and just kind of go through it. Like, we'll look at it, it again. But the visuals reminds- for this one, guys, I recommend it. I know we, we release both audio and video, but for this one, I recommend you watch it. When you're listening to it. Remember when we did that one where he said, uh, I don't want you to leave. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I don't want to leave. I don't want to. I don't want to leave. Yeah. And then Howard gives him that teasing knowing look. It's the same. Absolutely. A job to do. It's, it always backfires. I got to just, I end up doing it myself. You know, I'm really into biking now. Mm -hmm. You know, I go bike riding every day. (laughs) Now, why is Ralph involved? Well, when I bike ride, you need you evidently need special glasses. Yeah. Bike riding glasses? Yeah, I know it sounds corny, but the reason you need them is the wind. <laughs> yeah, it's like you need all this special photography equipment to make it look like a pile of mush with some eyes and a fake dog. My God, biking glasses, rollerblading, jogging, all BS, all the, all the hobbies. My God. Well, it's true when you're when you're doing certain things, you need the accoutrements. Like, I mean, if you're oh, taking come photography, on. he's not going on the Tour de France. Well, that's the whole point. He's not racing. Like, what's he doing? Like, you know, the only thing he needs is Ralph's ass in front of him on a tandem bike. Uh, you know, <laughs> they <laughs> did do that. They did ride the tandem bike. Of course. Remember, they went to Jackie's, and I think Jackie said something like, "Hey, look, two faggots just rode it." <laughs> I, can't. I don't. You know, I, I know don't it's even not know. I might, I might have to ask Rick after this. Like, I just want to say, like, hey, do you want to like rent a tandem bike and ride down by Canal Side and see what he would say? <laughs> <laughs> He'd probably look at you like you had three heads. <laughs> it's not. I don't even know if they. I, I'm sure they exist, but I can't imagine. Um, I can't imagine seeing too many people on them anymore. There used to be such a fad. Remember, I, I don't know if you ever see couple shirts anymore. Like I'm with him. Then the arrow points to the other person. Like I'm with her, that kind of thing. Uh, that was more like a jokey. It's like that. It was the meme of our time. You yes, know? absolutely. So <laughs> with the two of these guys, it would just be like salt <laughs> and pepper. Shirts. Why don't we have any memes of them on a bike together, please? I wonder about that, you know, like all these Howard TV things and you never get video of him and never, no pictures of him biking, pictures of him jogging loads. What, you know, but not biking. I know. I, <laughs> what you wouldn't give for the Photoshop opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always looking at an angle. I never realized how much the wind and the dirt kick up into your face. Oh, yeah, get grit. What? <laughs> you get oh, my grit. God. I mean, I could barely open my eyes this morning. So So you need th- something like goggles? No, they're sunglasses, but they wrap around almost like Yoko wraps around her sunglasses. You know? <laughs> Wait a minute. Where is he bike riding? In the Arizona desert? <laughs> the La Brea tarpits. 
<laughs> I mean, come on. I, like, okay, when you ski, you need goggles, especially if it's snowing and if it's super sunny. You and know, if you're on a motorcycle, the helmet is to keep bugs out. Chris Cornell, the, the singer, the, the now deceased singer from uh, Soundgarden, was on a highway with his on, with his helmet on, but his visor was up. And a bee or a wasp flew right into his eye and kept stinging him while he was going like at high speed, he was, he was said, normally that might've just sent me right off, you know, and my hands taken off the handlebars and I would have been dead, but I knew enough to like slow down, go off to the side, take the thing. And his face was swollen. Like you wouldn't believe. Oh my God. That's but, insane. But I, I ride roller coasters. Anytime I go, I have sunglasses on because I had like a muffle head from Cedar point fly directly into my eye and ooh. it hurt and it's, and it's separated. So my, Mom, we had to pull all the parts out of my eye with tweezers after. Oh, Jesus. It was terrible. Oh, Christ, yeah. I get skeeved out by that. Just that's the, the idea. Oh, it was, oh. it was awful. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so this is the, you know, the, uh, the uh, Twilight Zone version of uh, QF where we talk about our most horrific accidents and talk <laughs> all about them. Goggles. Sorry. Yeah, like a sports glass, as they call them. So... Unfortunately, I can't see that good, and I don't wear contact lenses, so you have to put some sort of prescription in these goggles, and it's very difficult because the goggles wrap around, and it's hard to put a lens in them. Yes. So uh, that started me on my search for sports, gla- you know, sunglasses. So I bought a pair at the bike shop. They cost like 150 bucks, 200 bucks, and they put an eyeglass piece inside. The glasses. So, in other words, you have glasses on your nose, and then the then the wraparound glasses. Oh. You have two apparatus on your nose, and I got a big nose. Thank God, I can carry all these apparatus. <laughs> You've got room for a couple more then. But when I bought those, it was by a company called Bole. <laughs> so now he's Dwayne Wayne with the flip up sunglasses. Uh, do you think he really paid that, or is this plug the sponsorship so he doesn't have to? I, I uh, no, I don't think so. Not not in this. It, although you know, back then it would the lo- the law hadn't been changed where advertisements had to be you know flat out told, like they had to be very tr- transparent advertisement. Uh, it, up until that point, they tried to put it into the show, like you know, oh look, a uh, Golden Palace, uh, the you know the KC mm-hmm. story with the gambling and all that bullshit. Um, so it's possible. It's very possible. And they're off my face so that all the dirt and grit get right up into my eyes. So you need wraparound glasses. So I, I don't know. It just seems like it's very difficult to get these glasses. So there's this company, Oakley, that makes glasses. Mm -hmm. And they actually can do it so that there's not two glasses. There's only one glass. They make one pair of glasses with a prescription lens. Yeah, but what a fucking idiot. They've been making prescription sunglasses for forever. Forever. Yeah. My whole lifetime. He's he's making it sound like in 1995, this is a new, <laughs> well, it is new to him because he's never had the need to. He's only worn the sunglasses to make hide his crazy eyes. He acts like, yeah, so I'm not buying the dirt scenario. I'm thinking no. that he can't no, ride no, the bike cool. with his regular glasses. <laughs> yeah. He wants to look like a biker. Yes. So he needs prescription Oakley's. Yeah. Okay. They have to do it themselves. And I put Ralph in charge of get me some Oakley's. But also in the meantime, the Oakley takes like six weeks to get you the glasses. So then there was another pair of sunglasses with like these, uh, like motorcycle glasses, like like the sides are covered up so oh you don't get dirt in your eye. I told Ralph to get me the glasses. I send them over there. Then the guy says, Ralph told him not to make the glasses. Then I finally call over there. Ralph. Now Ralph was supposed to pick me up the glasses today. Now I find out that the glasses have gone out to Long Island. My wife's supposed to pick them up. That means I'll never get the friggin' glasses. Why? Why not? This is ridiculous. Re- ridiculous listen to what he's even saying yeah like so, if so so if your wife gets the glasses then you're going to get them unless you're living apart from her in 1995 yeah go to your house what yeah. are you talking about right and the other thing is with a situation like this you literally go and even back then it was it was not that complex you go to the optometrist you go if you especially if you know your prescription you literally hand them your prescription say i want a pair of these but prescription and they're going to find them for you with your money. You'll get them somewhere in the States shipped to you. Right. I mean, if it was a prescription required glass, 
glasses. Don't tell me that Laura, your assistant, wouldn't call whoever she needed to call to make an appointment with the optometrist and have them ordered. They already that, know your prescription based on your glasses. That's right. And but, but because it's clothing, it's clo- it's accessory related. You hand it, you hand off the detail to Ralph because he does nothing else except suck your cock. I mean, even clothing stores who order products in to, you know, like inventory for like mm-hmm. a spring line, a summer line. It does not take six weeks. No, it does not. He's full of shit. I put him in charge. I don't know. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, gay rich is involved. I got 20 seconds. <laughs> so two gay oh. guys are involved. <laughs> okay. Let's stop the video right now. <laughs> gay rich. Yeah. Is involved in picking up. Some sort of goggle sunglass device so you don't get dirt in your eyes to ride a bike. This is the complete most bullshit story I've ever heard. This this sounds like he's his coming out party. Now, Gay Rich was not an intern as far as I know, was he? Uh, he was involved in the Goo Goo Dolls dance party. He was for, on the show a sure. lot. Yeah, but I don't think an he was an intern, intern necessarily. I'd have to look it up. I can't remember, but I do I remember him, obviously. Of course. I I don't recall exactly. And I know he was he featured prominently in the Ra- not the Rainbow Room, uh Fred's Bachelor Party. Because he got pushed oh, yes. up on <laughs> Fred's lap and went, went put a thong on. Someone paid to hate him to put a thong on, whatever. And um so he might have had some tie into the show in terms of work. But what's he doing? What's he getting involved with fucking sunglasses? Why? And yeah. by the way, why isn't your wife doing this? That's a that's a perfectly good question. It's reasonable. Why isn't she doing this for you? She does. She's taking care of the kids. She's that busy. Come on. This is st- or Laura. Yeah, Laura. Whoever else. Gay Rich, my wife. The guy Lloyd There's from the glasses place. Involved. I just want the friggin' glasses. I can't see. How is that my fault? And it broke down when you made the call to the no, shop. No, no, no. I shouldn't make... have been involved. You didn't need to be involved. You would have. Oh, had... I don't need to be involved. Where's you, my glasses? I still don't have glasses. You would have had them first thing this morning. What is you it, Gary? Call. I You're sure I would have. Like I, I was a... supposed to have them yesterday. No, no, no. You... I got a weird call from the eye guy yesterday. Yeah, we weren't ready yesterday. Your buddy Lloyd, and he said he wanted to know if he could drop the glasses off with somebody that your wife is friends with. Carol. And I said, hey, you know what? You better call Ralph. I don't know what's going on yeah, here. Yeah, then he called Ralph and it didn't get straightened out. Because he wanted to give them to like your neighbor and I didn't even know who it no, was. No, no, yeah, no, no. I mean, I don't know he what happened, but Ralph didn't screwed call up. Me. I call- what kind of nonsense is this? You have you make sure you have a number. Someone deals with this. What kind of disorganization bullshit is this? I blame Howard because he doesn't yeah. answer the phone and he and he doles it out oddly to different people. So he tell he makes Gary so insecure that he's not sure how to dictate this situation. He puts Ralph in charge, who doesn't answer his phone and is fucked up all the time. Mm-hmm. He doesn't tell his wife what the hell's going on. And he doesn't pick up a phone and take care of it himself. So mm-hmm. this is all your fault. And now this is a, th- a thing on the show, I guess. Well, the other thing is, like, just, just in my my the way I'm thinking about when he had that, um, what was it? He needed a, a salad fork or something like that. And then Gary was saying the whole office ground to a halt because we couldn't find a fork for you. So he's delegating the same task to multiple people. I think. Yeah, he is like, like a five-year-old, like, Hey, did you see my, did you see my, Hey, did you see my, and now all of a sudden everybody's looking for this shit and it should be delegated to one person alone. Yeah. I just want a shit show. <laughs> it is a shit show and it's so simple. Yeah. I mean, it, it, someone would say, well, what? Maybe this is made up too. No, it's not made up. No, he's a nightmare and he likes to involve everybody in his private business and like getting things for him, but he wants it a certain way. He likes to make it as dramatic as possible. Mm-hmm. I think he also thinks there's going to be some benefit on the show from being like this. But yes. Now, in hindsight, when we look at these things back, it's actually a detriment. Oh, sure. Yeah, and you spoke to him. So what happened? And he told me he talked to you, and he set it up where Carol was going to bring. No, him to the I don't house. want my wife involved. I don't want Carol involved. I didn't do anything. And then I tried to call you to find out if this was okay, whatever, and you never called me back. So what do you want me to I do? I didn't get your message, Dick Wad. Well, I don't Dick have to. Wad, I can't sit Dick by the Wad, machine. Check your machine. No, I don't want a guy who I got to get twenty-five calls from. Get you, me the glasses now. Get out. Why isn't your wife involved? Like that right away to me screams something is going on. Like, why wouldn't 
That's yeah. strike one. Your, your wife's not involved. You don't want the answer. So you ask him to get you the glasses. If something went wrong, why are you trusting this derelict? <laughs> also, why are you unreachable in this situation? I, I know. Like, I believe Ralph when he says you don't you don't answer your messages, you don't answer. Because, I mean, we have we're, we'll eventually go through the stuttering John thing. I tried to call you. I tried to get in touch with Laura about this, you know, and you wouldn't get out. You didn't want to hear from me. I had to ask multiple people about how to get in touch with you for something. And you were not accessible whatsoever. I mean, we went through the whole Hurricane Sandy saga. They like fear for their life to get any approval for anything. And he doesn't make anything clear. Mm hmm. Get out of here! Get me the you're, glasses! You don't have to make 27 you're, you're, calls. You you're should, incompetent. Why did you call the eye man? Why did you call them? Why did I call them? Yeah. Because you were unable to deliver the glasses to me as of yesterday when I gave, gave Rich $10 to go pick up because the glasses. Because they weren't ready. They so weren't why painted. didn't you call These me and tell me that? Time. Why didn't you call and tell me that? I had I to go did. find out. You weren't there. You no, didn't you call didn't. Me back. I checked my I machine did. at 1 o'clock when I called the eye man and you hadn't called me. And I blame Howard for all of this. And now mm -hmm. he needs gay rich. Mm -hmm. Gay rich. Yeah. Not to Gary. go be a door dasher for glasses. I mean, yep. <laughs> and not Grillo. Grillo's still there, actually. I'm surprised he didn't bring him up, but, you know, he's probably busy Or the busy many other, other interns. I yeah. mean, this is just bizarre. Yep. Don't yell at me because you don't know what you're doing, and all I incompetent know. people yell because they don't do their job. I still don't have the glasses. Is that what you're yelling? Yeah. <laughs> It was my <laughs> job to get. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I was just going to say that too. Ralph took the words out of my mouth. Yeah, good one, Ralph. Sorry, we hate we we hate we hate your fucking guts. But in this case, yeah, score one for the berry tooth, berry mm -hmm. face. Am I right? I give him a job. All I know is my wife's involved. Carol's involved. I want my glasses. You shouldn't have been involved. That's where it broke down. You would have had no, him this yeah, morning. I'm sure. I was in the city all day. You told day. me I, I was going to have him, him yesterday. Yeah, I saw. I saw how I was supposed to get him yesterday. Yeah, yeah. What, I waited what, here at 1 o'clock and never got him. called me at 6.30 one night and said you needed glasses. I got on my blades and ran into the city. Ralph. Like a maniac. Are they here? Are the glasses in my hand this morning? No, and it's your fault. Uh, okay. Thank you. You would have had him. You would have had him if you didn't call and make arrangements. Thank you. For Thank you for helping me out. Thank you. Thank you for helping me out. Now my wife's involved. I'll never see the glasses. Like I never see food in the house and I don't see anything else I need. <laughs> my kid. He is like, he is such a fucking turd. You know, we covered a uh, oh, look breakdowns. Look at that face. We, we've covered, <laughs> we covered the most recent breakdowns. So what's this? 1995. So go back like almost 30 years later. And he is no different. No, this reminds me just the episode we did about the wedding and the wrinkle in his suit, not having the right T-shirt, bringing dirty jeans. This is the same. Look at that incompetent little shit. He's mm -hmm. the same incompetent shit. I mean, I always thought he was a little bit better before. He's not. Nope. Not we. Not one iota. Oh, get him today. I got to go for a nail and foot appointment. I talked to your wife last night. And yeah. she, she said they'd be there. For yeah, the I bet you I guarantee it. When I come home, they won't be on my desk. Well, I'll do it. I'll be I doomed. To make sure. All this psychotherapy and he can't do anything for himself. Nothing. Don't you think as a therapist, your first thing you should do is try to cognitively change the behavior to make him be able to do things for himself? He can't feed cats. He can't get dressed. He can't well, that's pack the, a bag. Well, that's the problem with analysis. It it does nothing to s solve the actual problems. You're really just there as a fucking lis as a listening post to for him to vetch to when all he does all day is bitch and moan about his life on and the radio. The, su the surprising thing too, when I'm hearing this, is anybody back then who was listening, which was a huge working class audience, really mm -hmm. believed he was an everyman. Right. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, there's you know, obviously people knew that he made way more money than the average person, but I know what you mean by that. That vibe was around for a long time. I mean, they wanted him to be a part of the Libertarian Party as governor, for fuck's sake. That takes a whole sort of anti-establishment rebel rouser voice of like, pull yourself up by the bootstrings and working class people. It's right. amazing to me listening to this back that we actually bought that. And the only reason he maintained it for as long as he did is because of the people he had around him. 
all the people that worked on this show that were scrimping and doing these fucking shows on the side on the weekends and Jackie, you know, like just kind of schlepping, doing gigs and stuff. They were they were actually doing stuff on the weekend, working for the weekend, working on the weekend to make ends meet. They're the blue collar. Yeah, I I think if uh, they got into the weeds about that sort of turmoil, maybe we would have thought of him more of the elite shit that underpays his staff and didn't rally around him as much. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, mm-hmm. and then, and especially when private, private parts time, cause it's, it's not too far away, but he's had the two books out or he's, he's just about to release uh, Miss America, uh, Miss America this year. And, um, you know, there comes a point where you have to, even the die hardest die hard, unless you're a complete fucking retard has to go, what is this? This is, yes. I, it's not speaking to me anymore. Yeah. The Miss America book with the makeup and the sex poses, like, Wait, what is this? Right. And this like this isn't someone flouting authority or saying, oh, I, I'm trying to do this because I'm into gay rights. No, you're actually, you think dressing up in drag is funny. You think it's like all this se- trans yeah, is funny, basically. It's that. And it's also just some sort of feti- fetish yeah. that clearly you're enjoying. Well, that's it. I mean, that that on the base level, it should have been, you know, what it, what the fuck is this? And I can't understand it. So I think when people, we did the to jump the shark and I know I promised a second episode, but again, it's just a lot of work and I, I eventually I will do it. Um, it, it. That this, this whole period, that's part of the downfall. And then when he divorces, when he divorces Allison, that's a huge problem because he's no longer relatable. He's absolutely no longer relatable, even to divorce people, because he's, you know, it's just, you know, he, that whole thing people were clinging to. I was in a, he's in a marriage and it's tough and he has all these problems and you hear Allison on the air. Now you don't hear her on the air. He's not divulging. He's not your friend anymore on the air. He's some guy that's holding his cards to his face. Right. Like he's hiding his cards. And now all of a sudden I can't relate to this guy. He's not divulging of himself anymore. And you can't unhear the rants about Imus, nope. which are exactly what he became. <laughs> 100%. Thank you. I'm well, sitting now here. they're in another system you can't even delay. Now, yeah, you now, can't stop that from happening. No, Ralph yeah. couldn't stop that. After he spoke to you, I couldn't say, no, I will pick them up tomorrow. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Has to involve my wife. He always involves my I wife. I didn't. I didn't involve your wife. I don't want to hear it anymore. Get out. I didn't. I'm just saying. I, that, I didn't ask you in. I was talking to Robin. I don't want to talk to you. I read Prodigy. No one likes. And you know what? He doesn't want him involved with the wife because he wants his girlfriend and his wife separate. Yes. And look at that. The, I didn't. Oh, babe. You yeah. know, like that kind of. Uh, and he's not really mad and he's saying oh i don't why are you even in i don't want you in that is such an act look at the look at the acting going on it's a lover spat too it's so (laughs) adorable (laughs) oh yeah get out of here (laughs) i'm working on my act i gotta go Yeah, I got to hear about this. According to Billy, Ralph has been trying to get some sort of stand-up act together. That I got to hear. I want to, yeah, Ralph, have you ever told a joke? No, not professionally. <laughs> he didn't that doesn't leave. stop him. You know what it is? I think Ralph's saying, hey, I get on the radio once in a while, like a rolling these guys. Maybe I can make some appearances. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> but I need an act. <laughs> I need something to do. Right. You know, they all start out that way. Write me a few minutes of material. Yeah. They either go to Jackie or Billy. Yeah. Everyone's afraid to go to Fred. <laughs> I would go to Fred. All right. Why don't you do an act where you try suicide on stage? Like you try oh, to kill yourself oh. each time. Like that, like, like that da- Daffy Duck cartoon? Yeah, drink like a Daffy Duck cartoon. Everyone can relate to that, Ralph. Yeah. Everyone's seen that. All right, thank you. You're right in touch with the more people have seen Bugs Bunny than you'll than you'll ever get listeners in the, in the entirety of your fucking career, buddy. You just get this vibe that you can't shake from this. No, you can't. Can it's it's a little. Do you feel like you're intruding? I feel like it's obvious that there's something going on that we're not privy to, but yep. it's obvious. Right. It's it's a, it's in the open, but it's mm-hmm. obscured. And right. I think that, Robin oh, knows and Fred knows. <laughs> I'm in the, I'm up in the air about that one to this day. I have no, like I now, think they're n- now they know, now they know, but in 1995, I wonder, and I wonder specifically about Robin. Nobody has seen that. Way to tap them. 
Had a way to tap into America's psyche. Daffy Duck cartoons. Uh, <laughs> cool. Why don't you appear somewhere and blow out the audience's hair? <laughs> 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 there you go. Yeah. Now that's fun. See, that's, that's an a, act. That's an act. You can blow out different people's hair on stage. And it's constructive. And it's good. <laughs> so Jackie another, joke. Yeah. And another thing. Why is Ralph the hairdresser? He gets supplanted and, and that becomes, um, what's her name? Tony. Uh, eventually. Yeah. And that's, it's obviously because, I think it's because he changed his system to whatever technology the wig became and Ralph couldn't handle that anymore. So he had to get someone who specialized in it. Well, it's also interesting that Ralph seems to get plugged into these things like hair or clothes or set design, but he's a nuisance in every single aspect. So what yep. is he really Right? Because well, anybody that works, because somebody always has to work alongside him. Mm -hmm. And anybody who does on the show complains or gets so frustrated and pissed to the point where you put, you implant this guy and inject him into this ecosystem of either set design, hair, makeup, uh, clothes, whatever. And we can't get him on the phone or we can't get him on the set or where he can't make a decision. And it just right. frustrates the whole process. So why does he keep getting injected into these situations other than the fact that you need a reason for him to be around? You need that, but also he's a narc. He's in the office. He's telling Howard everything he hears when he gets, when they have cuddle time. Pillow talk. Yeah. Yep. You got it. And he can engage him in inane conversations while he does I think it. you should layer your hair. Yeah. So anyway, I'm just trying to get these glasses. For oh. my new hobby. <laughs> The moment after he gets these glasses, and my hobby will be over. Yeah. <laughs> By the time I get the glasses, I'll be blind and have no hobby. <laughs> hey, as long as Billy just walked in, Billy, how come you told me yesterday that Ralph was asking you to write him a stand-up act, and then you just walked in and said you were lying? I made it up. Why? You better mean you were serious. I wanted to stir it up. Oh, uh, you did not. Come on, what happened? What? What are you? T what are you saying? I was just fooling around. Jackie, was he? How fooling did this around? come up? No, wait a minute, Willie. That whole thing about minute, Ralph really. talking to, to V was totally made up? Yeah. Why did you make it up? I don't know. I wanted to stir it up. But how can you stir it up? What are you stirring up? I don't understand. I don't know. I just thought it would be fun. What was going through your mind? Nothing. But you were dead serious. I mean, you weren't stirring anything up. You said that Ralph had gone to V at the at the Scott Einziger's wedding and asked that you write him a stand-up act. No. But that's what you told me yesterday. No, I didn't. Guys, well, right, what, what, what I heard him say to you I was that on three different that, occasions that, he'd that, ask V to, to that ask. That Ralph said to V, could you write, do you think you could get Billy to write me a few funny lines to say? I think Billy's like a, a weird guy. And like, well, I told I'm wondering this if, too. I'm he told you this v, too? Yeah. V might in, have put the, the kibosh on this. this. He told you this? Yeah, Billy told me the same thing. Okay, I think Billy is getting that vibe, especially from what we just listened to, that this is Howard's mistress i don't want to step on these toes right now there's a couple things at play here number one there's that absolutely he and he and he's like okay i see what's going on yes yes and he's gonna wait until he, he knows his wife is gonna call in he knows they're absolutely gonna get in touch with her and she's not afraid to say anything and also he wouldn't get in trouble for his wife calling in and defending him I think it also speaks volumes that the way he's approaching this by saying no, but acting, I wouldn't say scared, but timid and recluse Guarded. about this. Yeah, he's yeah. not, he's doing that on purpose because when he's doing that and they're trying to draw something out of him, mm -hmm. makes everybody wonder, wait, what's going on? It's, it's what, when, when, um, and, and he said it in the um, when we covered the uh, Billy West saga, the uh, John John K thing, which I wholeheartedly recommend, guys, if you haven't watched it, if you're a new listener and what have you, definitely go back and listen to the old episodes because we mm -hmm. we did we did we did a fair, really good job with that one, I believe. And um, he says silence was kryptonite to Howard in that episode, in that in the at the end when he's talking with Jackie and uh, stuttering John at the uh, in part three. And he, so he knows that the, the, 
the show thrives on conflict, especially. And if he doesn't give that conflict, in this case, he's going to shut it down. Like this is him kind of showing a, a silent kind of uh, sort of quiet kind of power by saying, now if I decide I'm not going to take part of this, what are they going to do? He wants to see how Howard's were going to react. And he's going to explain later, I, I lied about I lied about saying it was not true to see how far Ralph would go with this, to see if he would continue to deny it, knowing it's that it was true. And it also positions him in a way when he's like this as a docile, no, I made it up, whatever, just kind of brushing it off. Right. It makes the rest of them look like jackals, like they want the information. Right. Versus if he is some antagonistic figure, you would be less likely to side with him. I think so. But when he's like this, you're... You're, you're thinking to yourself, what is happening, right? Well, there's a, yeah, there's a, a few things and at he's, play. Yeah, you empathize with him. Sure. And it, it's, if he just went off the off the cuff and said, Ralph's an asshole, Ralph's this, that, you know, whatever the other thing. It, I don't think he's worried necessarily that Howard's going to give him shit for it, whatever. But he might at this point have some kind of inkling of, you know, okay, management is management. They, if I want more money, they're not going to give it to me. But I think by the end, before he leaves, he knows it's Howard and not management whatsoever. Or he knows that, you know, whether it's management or not, Howard's the 800 pound gorilla. He can affect whether I go or not by telling them, give him more money and they'll do it. And he knows there's some sort of symbiotic relationship that's not really clear between him and Ralph that is undefined the terms are unknown the payment is unknown Mm -hmm. and it's and it's bleeding into everything in the show yes and if he knows all this and he knows it from hearing from other people and what have you and also he wants to maintain some kind of um i don't want to say reputation but he wants to have a career outside of this and after this gig it will not look good if videos out like this that he knows he's being recorded he knows that this is going to be forever basically and if he comes off poorly here he's forever on tape being antagonistic or oafish or just really you know obnoxious or something and also uh, unprofessional well you can see the flip side of how it would work out if you were confrontational like an Artie or a Richie Wilson Yep. Or uh, Scott Einzinger or uh, John, uh, Stuttering John. Mm-hmm. You see how that result turns out. And it ends up becoming this just uh, back and forth that then you're not really even making your point anymore. And it becomes less about Ralph and Howard. And it becomes more about you. That's and right. And it doesn't look good. No. So he's trying to, he's trying to, I guess, save face to, 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 to make long, to, to sum it up in a little ball. But, uh, beyond that also, I think he really is, and this is where I think Billy was smart. I think he really wants to examine what Howard will do once he does this. He wants to see what the reaction is going to be from the big kahuna. Well, you have to picture if he's sitting there back there and seeing this all play out and just how we felt that vibe. Mm-hmm. He feels that vibe too. I guarantee Certainly. it. He's one of the, he's the smartest person in the room. Very observant. Yep. Hey, no. But why would you lie Billy, about why are you running around lying about me like that? Well, I can <laughs> understand. I, that I don't probably. know. This, this lion thing feels so good. Now I see why everybody's so into it. Oh. <laughs> are you having a nervous <laughs> breakdown, man? <laughs> you're you're Billy? really weird, Billy. I know. I think they transplanted too many hairs yeah. in your head. No, I think, I think V said that so, maybe V and Ralph have a, bond or something yeah. no i have a feeling v oh. lied to billy about it but, and now, now billy for her? but why would she why would she do that she likes me well, why would you do it but why would she feel so neglected that she has to make up something to, why do you get me why going? do you feel so <laughs> neglected i mean substitute your own name <laughs> oh he's sitting back <laughs> this is a very strange thing. yesterday i'm sitting in here and we're talking about ralph because you know ralph had been acting weird at scott einzig as well can i just say i wasn't and billy says weird, to me i, I think fun but billy yeah but billy said to me quite, quite in seriousness said you know 
Ralph sort of wants to be a performer. I said, well, no. So I he had a whole premise behind. Uh... Yeah, and I said, Billy, I don't think so. And all the guys were here. And he goes, well, he's already, like, called V, like, two or three times, and, you know, my wife, and asked uh, if I could write him a stand-up act. And no laughing, like, no. ha, 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 that's a joke. No, and even Jackie said, hey, you know, I'm surprised uh, he never called me. Hmm. And I said, uh, <laughs> and we were goofing on Jackie, actually. Uh-huh. But Billy never said at that point. No, it no, wasn't my, like a my, joke. My theory. Right, Fred? It didn't seem like humor. No, there was nothing funny about it. It was and kind then, of matter of fact. No, wasn't he like told, it was me, he for told the me he wasn't laughing. He goes, he goes, yeah. He goes, you know, you know, you know. Ralph's approached V you know, a number of times. And yeah. Answer. And then, he, he and then I said, well, did he kidding. offer to pay and stuff? He goes, no. I don't know what he wants to do. Yeah, he didn't say he was only kidding. And I said, well, what? So but then Jackie said, well, maybe Ralph just wants to be funny around here. You know, when he comes in on the air yeah. and have a couple of lines. He goes, no, he wants a stand up act. See what? Ha see, this is perfect. Billy's having a fucking. He's having a blast now because by throwing that out there and saying I made it up. They're the, he Howard's flustered. He has to have filler in the meantime. They have to come up with all these stupid scenarios and the rest of them like, but stuttering John and Fred and Jackie all know that it most likely is true because they'll believe Billy. They can't it's figure not, out his It's not game. even stupid scenarios. It's him sitting back makes it so Howard has to color the exposition of this. Sure. So Billy doesn't have to say what happened. Howard is saying what happened. Here's well, what happened. This, this, and this. And he was doing A, B, and C. You even said this to Jackie. Said it to V. He went to the wedding. Scott Einziger acted like an idiot. He wants a few lines. Jackie's Now Jackie's giving his input about what he thinks it could be. So Billy is sitting pretty. Yeah, well, what, what I meant is stupid is, uh, is Howard has to betray his own stupidity in like it, it, revealing his cards. Yes. So, and, and he's also like, he, he's utterly flustered because Billy won't speak now. He's just sort of gray rocky. I'm going, yeah, I don't know. Just I thought I'd lie. But it also reveals that Ralph is essentially useless. You just made the point that he's useless with getting glasses. If that's mm -hmm. his whole job. Right. And now he wants some sort of stand-up gig, and he's asking people who are underpaid, like Billy, who is a huge talent. Yep. And so this is just a very revealing segment, and Howard is revealing it. But also, Billy's weird because he's, quote-unquote, making this up when Howard knows that it's true. So he's trying to gaslight the audience into making them think Billy's stupid or he's, he's being weird or he's nuts or, or he's a liar, but we know that it's going to come out. And Billy knows it's going to come out. Yep. It's great. So I said, I said, gee, I don't know. He's never mentioned this to me. And then he's saying it to John <laughs> away from oh, you. Weird. So it's like yeah. a different conversation he brings. Yeah. So Billy, why would you, I mean, what, tell me the truth. Tell All me right. the God's honest truth. What I, happened? I thought it might embarrass him if I brought it up. And look at Ralph shifting around in that chair and smiling, smirking, kind of looking at the ground, looking around, shifting around in his chair. He reminds me of a kid who gets in trouble in the office and waiting to be called by the principal. You got like it. Like real her, nervous. Like, how her, are we going to get her, our story straight? What's the punishment going to be? Yes. Like, what, what kind of, how much detention am I getting? Am I because cleaning the whiteboard? Because he knows he did this. Yes, he does. Cause, cause but it he, is cause, true. Because he didn't so go to me. True. He didn't go to me. He went to V. At uh, Robin's book signing. And one time before that. But she was stunned. She thought he was kidding around. So and it is true. So it is true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Man, Billy, you're so Wait, 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 wait. Billy, is it true or not? It's true. Then why are you saying it's not true? Because I wanted to see if, how far he's going to take this. <laughs> are you, you're, it's not true. <laughs> the other day I had this theory that you have angst about being a performer. You're surrounded by performers right. and, and you can't perform. So you're kind of causing a calamity wherever you go no, Ralph in, in said real to life. Me, Ralph and it's not just he can't perform and be a Billy. It's he can't perform any of the tasks. He's Anything. a mistress. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I mean, see, for real, the way like we can't stand how Bath was injected into this picture Ralph is the same. Like, oh yeah. Why is he there? Well, he's another. He's another employee. That's what him and Beth have in common, obviously. But beyond that, um, he's really a whack packer. Right. Like, and like, you know, what's the difference between wrong. Beetlejuice and Ralph? 
don't get me wrong, it adds a layer to the onion of this entire show and saga, which is rich and deep, and this is why we have this show. That's right. But if you want to really think about it, Ralph is just useless. <laughs> he's useless as tits on a bull. There's no question about it. And if if there's anything he's good at, I guess it would be keeping a secret. Like keeping Howard's secret specifically. The biggest one. Yeah. That's about it. And if there are any like real deep secrets that um that don't involve Ralph, that you know, we talked about the pillow talk, he's keeping those to himself as well. But I believe, and I you tell me how you feel about this. Mm-hmm. If when Howard dies, what's the odds of what's the odds of a Ralph tell all coming out? Like I don't care about if he has because a, a, a Ralph tell all it I don't think he could has the mental capacity to write a book, but he could go to like a national Enquirer or something like that and get little dribs and drabs of stories out and make money that way. There's no trust in for Ralph. I don't believe it. Once he dies, I think there's a lot of people that are going to start talking about things personally, you know, more so than they even have on our show. Mm -hmm. But I think Ralph will not talk. I think that he will be handsomely paid in a will. Really? Shut the fuck up. Yeah, I do. I was th- I was I think chatting. He will with... shut the fuck up unless unless that number is not what he thought it would be. There's that, or he could at least, he could you know manage to uh, <laughs> find his way to the bottom of the ocean before Howard dies <laughs> as a little insurance policy. You know what I mean? Mysteriously. Yeah, I I don't know. I. Uh, it's hard. I, I think like the secrets, for example, the Bushkin book that came out, you know, much later than when Johnny died. Yes. That relationship was severed before. Yes. So if there were some sort of falling out, which I don't see happening, it would have to be on how Howard took care of Ralph after the show ends and he's still mm-hmm. alive. If there's something in that area, yeah. then maybe. Like Scott Thorson, the big problem was he was uh, ousted from the house by Liberace and then decided to go after him, like as a result of being, you know, shut shut out of all kinds of money and whatever, like gifts and, you know, just the high life, basically. But even then, Fillmore, people who are celebrities who have been outed by plenty of people, I'm talking about... uh, High, well-known celebrities like Will Smith, P. Diddy, Mm -hmm. shit like that. It's been around for a while, but unless a certain strain of media pays attention to it, it will just be considered a conspiracy theory. And I think even if Ralph does something like this, whatever entity protects Howard now will ensure that this trash will remain trash. And we'll, you're a conspiracy we'll theorist if you talk about it. I guess so. He said to me, you know, gee, I wish I could play an instrument. I'd start a band or something because, you know, now he has some sort of fame, even though it's negative fame. <laughs> and so you can kind of feel that. Well, no, that's why that's why it makes total sense. No, that we, been, we, yeah. we, we joke around about that. He I mean, says, if yeah, I but wanted I, to learn an instrument, I could. And, and Ralph has often said to me, you know, Gary goes to these performances, you know, goes to these appearances and doesn't even try to prepare anything. You know, you think he'd prepare something so people wouldn't feel so ripped off. I, I, so you just betrayed Ralph doing spilling the tea about with you about with Gary. That's Howard, again, showing his his whole cards and explaining that we talk about, we talk about you all, me and him. Yes. Behind your backs. And yeah. if it's negative, I'll cho- maybe I'll choose to tell, I'll throw Ralph under the bus and say, Ralph has said it instead of I've said, or we've talked about it. It's you know crazy. I mean? That's it's just totally like... Hello. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say that. Well, I mean, you know, we've had that kind of. Yeah, well, we, yeah, just talking we've about. We've had yeah, that kind it. of what? We've had that kind of what? Yes. Jesus H. Christ. This is, this is, it's, sure. it's, you know, it, in these goggles, like these 2023 goggles, it's just worse. It's worse and worse. Oh, yeah. Oh, fucking hell. 
guys go out and do. Right. Kind of lame. Yeah. You say you want to do so. So I, I mean, but so, I didn't say I wanted to do it. So anything. why did you? So you started calling V? No. You've never called V. I just called no. V. This yeah. Is, this gets even weirder now. So I called V and I said, V, come on, what's the deal? Did Ralph ever ask you? And she goes, I think I'd like to quote the great murderer football player OJ and say, I plead the fifth. So I said, No, V, really, you know, no kidding around. Did she goes, I plead the fifth. Now I go, V, come on, be serious. She goes, I plead the fifth, and I couldn't get anything else out of her get, except get, I plead the fifth. The so what obviously happened is that she told Billy this whole cockamamie story. And she must be I feeling weird fifth. now. And now Billy's covering for her. Yeah, she must oh, be feeling no. weird with Ralph. Well, I would, That's, even with the first time I heard this, I never bought that for a second. Okay, even if she said I played the fifth, what you got out of it, Howard, is she feels bad about this cockamamie story. No, she feels that something odd is going on between the two of you, which she doesn't want to get involved with That's and right. wants to shut the fuck up about it because it's so obvious that she doesn't want to add to it. Well, yeah, she doesn't want to incriminate any, anybody. She doesn't want to put herself in a situation where she's got to call people out, and she very well could, knowing because herself. Because why is this person so embedded? Yeah. And why, yeah. Yeah, well, like, if they don't serve a useful purpose other than rimming you and spilling tea and causing a ruckus, basically causing all kinds of dis disharmony and, and just backbiting in your, in your staff, I guess if that's the function and you're not letting other people, you're, you're not making Gary aware, like you're not telling your producer, this is why I want Ralph around because he causes problems and these problems create like entertaining bits for the show. And I always no, want the show to be like, if he did that, he, he, all he'd need to do is tell Gary. But instead, he gives him a cover like a child molester with a new name living on a street <laughs> as a mailman. You know what I'm saying? Like, this yeah. is just not. So she she feels this. She understands this. V and Billy. They're like, yes. OK, something else is going on here. And so when you want to be a performer. So I also think it's indicative of their relationship howard and ralph because H ralph feels comfortable enough to approach these people on mm -hmm. his show and ask them for these favors now do you see gary jackie fred anybody else grillo doing this this kind of presumptuous behavior now why does ralph feel this confident enough to do something like that well it why? wouldn't surprise it wouldn't surprise because me he's the, the boss's girlfriend it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if Howard told him to go do this. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like there's to, the to only reason you would feel comfortable with this is if you knew Howard would pretend to feign angry, but he's not. No. And she wants to like. But I don't know why she would do that, though. Is she that neglected? Get her on the so phone. you think V made it up? Or you think V's covered for Ralph? <laughs> I think V made it up. She told Billy this oh, whole convoluted story. She likes Ralph. She likes Ralph. She wouldn't. She do likes it. him, but she wants to feel like she's conducting business on your behalf or something. So let, let me I just, mean, she just wants to. You think V now made this up? If do I was going to go to anybody, I'd go to you. Maybe. I get it. Yeah. Do you ever see the caveat? That it's the same with Artie and just like in this conversation. Oh, they like you, like Artie. I like you, Ralph. I like ya. You know. It's this. They have to add that. They got to. They got to dress. They have to dress it up. Yes. It's like you putting the. It's that? like it's like putting the fucking pill in the wiener. Yes. Like I like I like you, Ralph. I like you. She likes you. But. But. Who else well, gets that? Who else gets that? Well, yeah. Who you mean? The who gets the benefit of that? That kindness. Let's say. Yes. Like, because if you're a normal person, you might get beat the fuck up. If it was anybody else. Yes. You would not get that treatment. No, not at all. And like I said, like I said, it, it's like you said, actually, how much they all know or think. I, I think they don't have to know anything because it's in, like it's it's a little too. It's a technicolor picture in front of them. Well, remember when we did the rubber episode? About the oh, condoms. The, oh, the condoms. Yeah, yeah. Rubber gate. It was so obvious to everybody around that that's fucked up what was happening. Yes. And something was going on. Oh, yeah. That everybody knew, but nobody said out loud, but tiptoed around it. I mean, that was the first time. Now, as a listener, 
yes, that could trigger you to be like, what the hell is going on? But like I said, so much went on during that time that, you know, you kind of passively listen and you're just like, what the fuck? And you kind of file that in the back of your head, which mm-hmm. then when you kind of realize that he's closeted, you're that comes back up in your file. You're like, oh, yeah, that time. But that episode specifically, they all were pussyfooting around that entire thing, but they all knew you could tell. Yes, I think so. And also, I can't recall at the time, did we both agree that Howard perp- like subconsciously wanted to get caught so that Allison could initiate the divorce? I think you said that, and... Or do you think uh, he was just stupid and got caught? I don't know. I forgot what we both said about that, to be honest with you. But I do remember thinking, this is such a propaganda, Pravda, bullshit... Oh, certainly. Nonsense exposition. Like, yeah. nonsense. Well, it it made... Well, the first time I heard it, I remember going, this sounds canned. This sounds like really shitty melodrama that's been concocted by a third rate, you know, soap writer, you oh know, for the, pur- for the purposes of covering something that's real. That's actually real. It was worse than reality show housewife acting too. Right. Yeah. He likes you so yeah. much. He wants to work on a stand up act with you. <laughs> hey, if you he wants to represent. Ralph. Wait a minute. Have you ever even said jokingly to me? No, that's why. <laughs> Billy, no she, it is true oh. though, as far as you know, that she said yeah. this. Yeah. Oh, your wife's. Oh, boy. Is your wife getting wacky? Yeah, Who cares? She's good in bed. I don't Get know. it. <laughs> I, I got to say, Nancy Sirianni's looking like the most stable out of the bunch. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that it's me because I was scared for a second that Billy had lost it. I know. So it's the wife that's lying and Billy. I mean, not the person who's sitting back, rocking in their chair, uncomfortable and laughing, who's an yeah. idiot, dilettante, derelict. Yes, that you picked up for, for for nothing. Well, Billy's covering for his wife. No, who doesn't? Well, hey, V. V. Good morning. Good morning. Why'd you tell Billy that that Ralph's been asking for a stand-up act? I never in a million years said Ralph has asked for a stand-up act. That's not oh. true. So Billy. Yeah, no, I never said that. What What did you, you tell me? You embellished a little bit. What's the right said jokes? That he came to her privately more than once, and it was kind of weird. I thought About maybe what? he was kidding around. See if you could get Billy to write some stuff for me, will you? <laughs> yeah. And, and she was like, V has Ra- Ralph's busted. Ralph's yeah. like he, that that look he just gave was, aw shucks. And busted. the stand-up act uh, anecdote that was made up by I think it was Howard in the beginning. Was, he said yeah, for a stand-up act as a performer, but right. Billy never said that. No, Billy just said you embell you embellished that, like you said That's that right. that you that was for that was from you. Come up to you and ask you to get Billy to write some stuff. Twice. What? When? Oh. V. V. When? Ralph. Hey, what, what are you Ralph. talking about? Uh. Ralph. V. Ralph, look at where you are. You're in the, pardon my French, F and catbird seat. You know, Howard would help you with anything. Go for it, Ralph. Take advantage of the situation. You know, come on. Oh. Let's tell the truth. What? I don't. Okay. There we oh. go. And the look Howard's the, face too is now concerned. Yes, because his 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 boy toy is fucking things up for him. Because in order to keep the the wind the all the balls like up in the air, you have to maintain a very like Howard's very like uh, he's very concerned about maintaining control. When you have a person that's that incompetent on the staff, and Howard's just as incompetent, but he's used to controlling people his entire life now and uh, whining to get his own way. When the one cog, when the one ball is all of a sudden on fire, like, oh, Jesus Christ, I don't know what I'm going to do about this one. Now, so he's 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 definitely panicking. Let's put this into perspective. If this was a woman sitting in the chair, OK, the marriage is contentious. They're fighting. He's got this movie he wants to do. His ego is getting bigger. And the woman who he met at a gas station mm-hmm. is now sitting in this chair who's now some quasi hair stylist, whatever glasses getter. Okay. Is now in the hot seat. Pretend it's a woman. Okay. And this other woman says to her, who's pretend it's an Instagram model. Sure. Okay. He picked her up on Instagram. What the fuck is this person doing here? But she's always here. Okay. Just get, just milk it for all you got, honey. 
you know what you're here for. Just get what you can get. And that's what is happening as we speak. It's basically yeah. having Leonardo DiCaprio sitting in a chair looking at some Instagram bullshit model at con and saying, just milk it for all it's worth for the weekend. That's right. Because I mean, I'm kicking you to the curb later. He, she's telling him the advice that you would give some gold digger at con. That's right. Because she knows the score. Of course she does. Well, this is, and this is why <laughs> God, I would love to get her. If she's still alive, I'd love to get her for an interview, but I know Billy wouldn't do it. He would advise his wife not to as well. Billy won't do it until he's dead, but he might be one that will speak out afterwards. I'd say so. What you're talking, I mean, if I did, I would be upfront about it. I would ask, how, right. first of all, if I, if I wanted any advice, I would go to Howard, nobody else. No one right. to anybody else, but I wouldn't go to- V, are you saying that I, he came to you and said this and now he's denying it? Ralph. V, when? Ralph. What are you talking about? Ralph, don't make me do this. You and I have a special thing. Come on, Ralph. V, v, don't, don't make me do v, this, you're Ralph. great. I love you, but I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea. I Who do you believe, it. Robin? <laughs> I got to think V's telling the truth now. Do you? Ralph's protesting. He's turning red over there. No, I'm not. See, see, like Robin has no reason in this situation not to, you know, uh, she has no reason to lie about this. Because she can see, she saw the same things we all did. And the camera, the, all the uh, isolated uh, video of Ralph completely being busted and having this, that guilty looking face on. This is like watching the Prince Andrew interview, for oh, fuck's God. sake. Yeah. So, just, so the good. guilt is just emanating. It's oozing. It's off oozing. The he, TV. he can't he can't make eye contact. He's Dude. he's he's fidgety, he's everything. Come on. Asking, you know what for I'm saying? asking for clarification. What what do you mean? Where was I? What was I, what was I wearing? Did I, I didn't eat? even sweat? Right. <laughs> I lost the ability to sweat because of the Falcon Wars. <laughs> the Falcon. <laughs> I lost my sweat glands in the great in the great scores oh, wars. <laughs> was there Botox in the Falcons that you shot under your armpit? Shut up. Oh, for Christ's sake. Really? I think I'm believing I, Ralph. Really? I think I, I, so. I, I mean, Ralph. I like V. I like Ralph. I just don't. I don't. I just. I can't imagine oh, that v, Ralph. Why would... don't you tell him where he's at it? Yeah. What yeah. was this? Refresh his memory. The first time, I don't even exactly remember where I was. I just remember being really stunned, really, really so stunned because I don't. You know, I had no comeback for it. And you know what Howard reminds me of? Howard reminds me of Bill Gates when the interviewer said, oh, "Well, what about all those dinners with Epstein?" He goes, "Well, he's dead." So, you know, like Howard is that in between, like, yeah, I didn't get caught on the island and I didn't get caught with anybody like Prince Andrew, but I'm kind of guilty by association here. So, I, I, you know, he's dead. It was just dinner. So, you know, so Howard's like, you could just tell when people are full of shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, th that's why sometimes Ugh. guys, I will insist on using the video where possible because the element of visuals adds so much more to this audio. Although, like, the, 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 listening to it, I don't think you need the video. You, do you agree? I think for this one, you need the video. Okay, but but um, but in general, like, if you listen to the oh. RD, the 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 pokers, the stealing money thing, whatever with Ralph, that one, the audio was plenty. I mean, especially if you've been a listener of us for all along and you've listened to every episode, you don't need the visual. You can already, you know, you're a trained listener. You right. can pick up on these things pretty easily. No kidding. <laughs> so then the second time, I can tell you exactly where that was. And I'm really PO'd at myself because I've been through it once before. I should have had a snappy retort to get me out of it. But, you know, I... Get you out of get it? Get you out of what? Out of what? You should well, want Billy writing for Ralph. You want, if you want Billy to write for you, he's more than happy to. Approach me. We'll discuss, you know... But he did what approach the, you. the size of his paycheck is. You can't just say to me offhandedly, you know, uh, get Billy to write me a few lines. <laughs> you know, I, what do you think I could be for? Get, get Billy to write a few lines for me once in a while. I you believe Ralph. I that. think he's making he's this all up. Where was this? Supporting pay his him. girlfriend. Pay him. Yeah, pay him. Essentially, uh, and she and Big B, I think she I, she actually and I don't think I know she was Billy's manager as well as his wife. Listen, V is pissed because she is Billy's manager 
and she's a business person. She understands the underpayment that's going on on the Stern Show. She also understands Ralph's position and what he's doing with Howard. Yes. So it makes her uncomfortable. That's why she's saying, don't do this. Like, right. don't put me You're in this gonna, position to out you. No one's going to win. No one's going to win here. But also, how dare you put me in this position where you're going to ask me for something free, like my husband's talent, to write you something because you know that leverage. And that's why she said, you're in this position for a little while. You're the little mm -hmm. golden bitch boy mm -hmm. mistress for right now. Yep. Work the angles that you can, but do not come for me and my husband the right. angles that you can't. You can work some angles. Work them. Work them, baby. But do not work me. Yep. And, and if he, the thing is, and uh, the, uh, this is where I, I would be, if I were her, I understand exactly why she's pissed. If it had happened once she could write it off as he's drunk or he's, you know, whatever, he's just making a joke. But if you do it multiple times, it means it's something that's, it's, 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 it's a deep rooted thing. Like uh, maybe I can make this happen because of who I'm attached to. But it's also an unknown on their end, if he's approaching them multiple times, is this something that's Howard is telling him to do? Is yes. that the unspoken thing? Do you understand would, what I'm saying? Sure. So, I would, I would love to be, I have been a fly on the wall when, when all, V and Billy were discussing his leaving, you know, and then prior to his leaving. Like we all understand mafia where it's the boss doesn't specifically ask for a favor, but if his captain comes up to you and says, you know, we did this I, I'd, for re you. I'd really like this table right. or I'd really like these tickets or I'd really like it if blah, blah, blah. We'd, re we'd really appreciate it. Something implied, like that. You know, it's, it's implied it's, pressure. So I think that multiple times asking Billy and V meant and they weren't sure is this coming from Howard or is this coming from you and being very uncertain about it and unhappy and not sure cause, what to do with it? It would also cause a, an undue amount of stress. And we still don't know if Howard knew, to be honest. That's right. Yep. No, 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 you guys are just trying to make me nuts. Or this no, no, like no, a, I swear no, to you. No, no, maybe you don't know. But maybe, I, think, I think V is making this all up because she can't remember when Ralph asked her. She said she but knows wait, wait, about wait, the second place for sure. Wait, yeah, the second, where is where the, second, the second place? Where is the second place? When we were at Rosalie's. What's Rosalie's? Uh, Robin's book signing. The book party at the book, there was no, a, no, 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 There was no drugs or alcohol involved. Wait, 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 the panic is setting in. Yep. 100%. This is now I'm a little unsure if Howard knows or not it, mm -hmm. how he's leveraging his power as his mistress. But I know that Howard's embarrassed that he's busted for leveraging that power. The same way he was busted when already tells him, Howard, you're going to sit there and tell me you don't remember us telling you this on the plane. He goes, I, I, I remember you telling me. I, I, I just, I didn't see this happen, but I remember. The so same it's the way same exact recently situation. Recently, he left the wrinkled suit. Right. And Howard and Beth feign like he's doing something and this is just normal. And he's a guy who puts a suit in a car. Is that yes. what you're telling me? I mean, this whole. Guys, I don't know what else to tell you. I know everybody's oh, you conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories, yeah. Come on. Yeah, it's, Come it's on. staring you. It's staring you blue in the face. Slapping you in the face. Yeah. Bitch slapping you in the face. Um, in town. Was it Rizzoli's or Brentano's? Oh my God, I'm giving a plug to them. It was just the book signing that I attended, Rob. Oh, the book signing right. in Brentano's. Mm. The, the first one. And you and you, V, you're saying that Ralph walked up to you and said, "Would Billy?" Uh, could... We were talking. Uh, at, we were talking at a restaurant. Did you say? No, 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 no at the bookstore. Not at a restaurant. At a, never said at a restaurant. I said it was not at a book party. It was not at the book party. It was at the book signing that I attended. And so it was in Manhattan. I have not. Oh, please. Gone that, that, that first one. Sorry, Robin. And it was like in the bookstore I, I approached you? We were talking and it came up. You didn't come out of the blue and go, hey, V, blah, 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 blah. Come on, Ralph. What, 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 what did, what did I say? Credit, I, honey. I believe her 100%, 120,000%. This is what you do when you're in trouble. Yep. You, what? Huh? I can't Where was hear. I? What do you mean? Obfuscating uh, it. Cabby used to do the same thing. 
when he cabbie called in about the porno tape and he started going, what's a producer? <laughs> like what's it what's it what's the what's an executive producer do uh, steven spielberg wh- producer uh like like i said with the prince andrew thing uh uh what pizza place oh uh, uh, uh i had a i had a birthday party for my daughters that day i mean what you you know you remember from 20 years ago i just it's just crazy Rap. You know, that Prince Andrew interview for the body language experts, like you didn't need to be a body language expert to know he was full of shit. But if you were one of those guys that has the YouTube channel, it was like a feast, that entire interview. When he saw that picture and said, well, so th- th- that's the thing about the sweat, because he's sweating in the picture and he's like, uh, uh from the Falcons war, I, 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 I lost the ability to sweat. I actually had a a momentary medical condition where he couldn't sweat. I was like, you have to be kidding me. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> well, that the picture was the Falklands was in the early eighties. That picture was way later. What's he going on about? I know. Jesus oh yeah. Christ. They had Photoshop back then. Yeah. Big time. <laughs> oh, I, what did I say? You said, you know, I'm a funny guy. You get Billy to write a few lines for me. And I'm just stunned when you say that because you know, you want to discuss it, let's talk about it. But, you know, Billy is more than happy to write for people as long as there's a check in the mail. I okay, wish Billy would write something for me. Z, 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 Z. Z. I got a check in the mail, Z. and Billy won't write a damn thing. Uh, don't take me down that road. Really? Oh. What road am I taking you down? Come on, Billy contributes quite a bit. Uh, I'm very- yeah. yeah. Yeah, don't take him down that road. No, don't you do not. You and you dare. And if you don't think for a minute, she wouldn't call Howard on his shit. If he decided oh. to go further down there, he would look like the Starbucks CEO in a Senate hearing. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. That's great. There you go. I'm very proud. <laughs> Mom. But anyway, listen, V, what was the conversation leading up to that? Because. Maybe oh, Ralph, it, now you need context. You, well, I don't know. Ralph, I don't know. I never. I you never, know what? The mo- it, most of what you say, I listen to, you listen to me, but I can't remember everything because nothing stuns me and nothing has that much chutzpah, quite frankly. This reminds me, remember when he was all fucked up and they were at the Hamptons mm. and he made up that bullshit about missing money and having to go back and they were driving oh, he, around he, he got lost and some guy was driving around he couldn't remember howard's address he was all fucked up basically he was drunk and, and he then left R- a R- fuck D- you he, he left a fuck you message for leaving him yes this is kind of that you know yeah. it's this it's this nonsense because he's such a fucked up human being yes and you are putting out this narrative and then the second you get anybody who has any sense in them speaking the truth, all of a sudden it collapses. Mm-hmm. And and those anybody like uh, the the one time I think some people had uh, sympathy for Ralph was when he was crying when Bob Saget passed away, and uh, he was talking about how Bob discussed you know ralph's sister had the same problem or something like that, and, uh, same problem that Bob's sister died of scleroderma, and. Um, and then the um, people were like, oh, God, you know, and then and then Howard just cold bloodedly went like, yeah, whatever. I don't give a fuck. You know, what has he done? I thought I'm your number one. You know, well, forget about Bob Saget. Stop praising him. So people I think people were more like Howard's being a, a real prick about that. Don't let that fool you into thinking Ralph is some kind of normal, like likable in like human being. Everybody can have a bad moment. Doesn't mean you're a good person. I th- just like Beth. Yeah. Like you had sympathy those, for her for that one episode, you know, but then it, by the end of the episode, you were back to like, fuck the horse. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. No one has ever approached me and asked me Billy. that. <laughs> Billy's just sitting there quiet. <laughs> <laughs> He's whipped. He's, I hate doing this. Why? I, just, v, v, I, 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 I swear to God, I, 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 I really, do. I really like you too, and I have no idea what you're talking about. You didn't joke around, uh-huh. like, you know, maybe, like maybe that. that's why I'm trying to ask like, what the conversation was. Maybe you said that, something like, you know what? The first time you said, but it, it sounds like was V was so insulted. I thought, yeah, maybe you why, but you know what doesn't around. make sense about V's story? So why would she be so insulted by this? Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand it. He, she, he, she's not insulted, you fucking idiot. And this is Howard trying to get him out of Dodge. 
This is gaslighting. Yeah. He's repainting the situation as some sort of V is some uh, mouthy mouthy wife who is upset, ridiculously upset, and is not, um, she's out of control and doesn't know what she's talking about. And it's, it's complete bullshit gaslighting because he wants to evade everything that was said in the beginning. Yes. Why wouldn't she just say, Ralph? I don't understand. Why, why wouldn't V just say, hey, if, if you want Billy to write for you, then uh, let's discuss payment. Are you serious? Then give me a call at this number. Then yeah, why would you try oh. to avoid that conversation? But this is also how he's trying to color this as so, she's some irrational person is because the money issue mainly stems from Howard. Yes. He's the seed and the stem. And Ralph is the flower where it's like, okay, I'm already dealing with this shit. Now you're going to add on your flower to approach me. We're ready. Underwatered motherfucker. Yeah. Now you want, now you want these fruits of our labors to also be contributing to your fucking bitch. No. Well, and yeah, that's got to be galling for Billy and for her. And, uh, and I mean, I, if it, if it happened one time, I think they could just go literally like wipe off the dandruff, you know, and be like, ah, eh, whatever, nothing, nothing to it. But the second time it happens, you're like, oh, I see. Okay. Yes. You're, you think you can get anything you want now because of who you're with and who you're fucking. You think you're not going to respond to me in a way that is going to pay my husband what he deserves. You're going to evade it. You're going to mock it. You're going to saddle it and keep going along like this doesn't matter. And then to insult my intelligence even further, you're going to have your bitch boy come up to me and ask for him to write things. Not once, not Mm -hmm. twice, but multiple multiple times. times. Yep. I really didn't feel Ralph was approaching me in a in a business manner. I felt that he was asking me to have Billy just do him a favor and do this for him. And that's and you Ralph, know, you swear you don't even know what she's talking about. And Billy, and that, you know, Billy. Do you see that smile yeah. on him? Yeah, he's his sweet. face looks like he doesn't know what he's talking about. My ass. Right. <laughs> you, you know me. I swear to you. Ralph would admit it. I, I would. I know he would. I would. Okay, okay, no, I, I admit I was Howard, almost Howard, the last one here. Howard, Howard, I have a, a nation worth of people listening to me now. No. If I was really going to BS, why don't I have something to plug? I have nothing to plug. I have a shower I need to take and a day to begin. I understand. So, all right, all right. Take listen it. to these two smiling and looking Laughing. at each other and Look moving we've done. around in their chair like some ADHD fuck with a curl in front of his hair he they couldn't give a shit either of them they're gonna go home fuck each other and laugh about it (laughs) yeah pretty much but then it's a it's a good day's work yeah it's great hey i'm not saying you're lying i don't i don't even want to argue with it you just said she was lying and you've been trying your best to gaslight the audience into thinking she's full of shit they made this up whatever and never regardless of what billy said originally he did admit to it finally this is verbal foreplay. Yep. A gross misunderstanding. You, 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 know, you know what? Maybe, maybe we were, that must have been what it was. Why wouldn't Ralph know? go up to Billy and ask him directly? But I'm saying, Ralph didn't really ask this. Hmm. If there's something happened that somehow she took it that Ralph was asking Billy just to jot off some lines for him. I don't know. But there was never any real... It doesn't seem maybe to be. There was no, maybe Ralph question. was joking and maybe... maybe hold Billy on a second. Hold on. Up a few- and this is the same thing Artie did. He gave him an out. To say, like, maybe Ralph, you know, maybe I maybe I'm mistaken, whatever, and then you know, we'll we'll leave it at that. And then Ralph pushed the issue. And then he decided, like, you know, Tom he, he he totally gave him an out and he said, Look, you I, I I offered you a chance to fucking go away. You had to come back on the air and start systematically trying to give me shit. Now I'm gonna go after you. <laughs> this guy sounds exactly like I was at a bachelor party when I was a longshoreman. This Cuban guy was drunk sitting right next to me. And this ugly stripper was giving me a lap dance. She put her ass, her spread ass, right in my face. And this Cuban guy kept going to me, Adi, eat the spider. <laughs> eat the spider. Eat the barking spider. <laughs> I mean, like he was possessed by something. And we were like, dude, what are you talking about? Like, what is this? What are, yeah, right. What's the spider? He's 